What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? It's Monday, March the 1st. It's a whole new fucking set of rules. Greetings from the joint. The joint is brought to you by, number one, movement watches. But first, I got a little story for you. In a tiny apartment in Southern California, two guys revolutionized the watch business. A couple of college dropouts came in and shook things up. Fair prices, new colors, fresh designs. And now, Movement is an international brand. Way more than just watches. They've expanded into blue light glasses, jewelry, and more. Let me tell you something. The glasses they sent me are tremendous for the computer or for when I'm in the car driving. I love them. I look like a fucking professor. It makes me look smart. But besides that... The watch they sent me, the, the watch, the Element International Waters, because I'm, I'm an international man of mystery, is also tremendous. These movement watches are smart. Their pieces look like they cost a half a stack, but since they own the, the process and do everything online, you end up paying a fraction of what they would charge you in a department store. So do me a favor. You got no middleman. Movement passes that quality on to you. Ships free, and if you don't love it, send it back. And it's all for free. It's all forgotten. Elevate your look today, but don't break the bank. Join the movement and get 15% off today. 15% off with free shipping and free returns by going to mbmt.com slash Joey. Again, it's movement watches. But for now, for the website, it's mbmt.com slash Joey. You're showing up with nothing but heart and a movement watch. You understand me? They're beautiful. They're rugged. I love them. The church, uh, the church, the joint is also brought to you by my favorite company in the world, Onnit. Listen, when it comes to supplements, Onnit's got gotcha. you. Whether it's the Shroom Tech, whether it's the Alpha Brain, whether it's the New Mood, the the shroom, the Alpha Brain powder that you put into your little wa- six, eight ounces of water and shake it up. They've got the the new snacks, the uh, the uh, the chips, the spicy cheddar, and I also just put a video up for uh, the chocolate peanut butter cups. Like the, it's not a chocolate peanut butter cup. It's like chocolate with peanut butter in it. But there's seven grams of protein. They call them like protein bites. Listen, I love Honor as a company. I love what they provide. I love what they do, their service. You know, Alpha Brain, you get Alpha Brain, you don't like it, which is their flagship product. If it doesn't work for you, you tell them, they'll send you the money back, and you can keep the product. That's a company. That's a company that cares. That's why I do business with Onnit. So go to Onnit.com right now and press in church, C-H-U-R-C-H, and get 10% off your first order. That's it and that's that. It's Monday, the 1st of March. Let's get this party started. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? Monday morning, March 1st. Can you believe it's fucking March 1st? In like 10 days, it's going to be when the fucking pandemic shut everything down. St. Patty's Day. So we're a year away. So this cost us a year of our lives. But we did it. We're almost there. That's it. It's springtime in fucking 21 days or some shit. We fucking did it. I had a celebration. I wore my little light blue because it's Monday. <laughs> I want to come out looking good. I got my little hairdo done. Everything's good. I'm off the fucking pain pills. They fucking narrowed me down to Vicodin on Monday. I didn't take a Vicodin until Wednesday. I got a little fucked up on Thursday. I'm like, that's it. I'm done. That's Vi- I'm only good with Vicodin for like two days. That's it. After that, I can't deal with it no more. But 
We fucking uh, passed on from the oxies. Everybody's okay. Everybody's alive and kicking. And we're here for another fun Monday. For the last couple weeks, uh, ever since I left L.A., I've been thinking about him. And I've been talking a lot about him on the podcast because I hadn't seen him in years. Um, but I didn't realize that I got to New Jersey and unwind and everything. Yes, Rogan helped me a lot in comedy. Ralph, he helped me a lot in comedy. You know, Mitzi Shaw helped me. I had a lot of help in comedy. But one of the guys that gave me the biggest boost ever, a boost is like in the street of boosters, if I went up to Mike and gave him five grand, you know, how would you feel? You feel like a brand new man. The first person to really give me a boost in comedy was Doug Stanhope. I've said that a thousand times. I met him in 91, 92. Uh, we, he did the Broker Joker once or twice. Uh, he slept over one time. You know, he gave me advice, and then I, I didn't talk to him for a long time. And then uh, I bumped into him in Seattle in 95, 96. I did New Year's with him in 97, uh, 96, I think. We did New Year's together, and the rest was history. He uh, he pumped me up, man. He built me up, and uh, he said great things to me. He helped my confidence. And it was him who gave me the push to actually get the balls to fucking move to L.A. Because if it was up to me, I was scared. You know, I was like, I was not, nothing was ever going to happen. I was so fucking negative, you know, between the drugs and, you know, my past. I didn't think I could move for, past that. And he was like a fucking brother to me. I, I lived with him. I stayed with him. Uh, he, you know, he called the comedy store for me and gave me a reference so as far as I'm concerned, he's uh, he's one of my mentors. He's one of my best friends. He's one of my brothers. So what we did this weekend is, you've had enough of me. You've had enough of me. I've had enough of me. I'm sick of fucking talking. I did a, <laughs> uh, I did a fucking Zoom over the weekend with uh, Doug Stanhope. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. That's all I can tell you. I'll check in with you afterward. Thank you for coming on and watching. Enjoy this. Doug, what's happening? When you left L.A. was the end, and I didn't even realize it at that time. That was well, the think, end. It seems like when it, when it started. Yeah, it was just bullshit. It's good that uh, I get to see you live and in fucking person, finally. You look good. <laughs> Are we going? Yeah, we're on. We're on. All right, good. Yeah, no, it's, it seems like L.A., started when I left. That's when the comedy store became booming. and Yeah, but then it just grew into something else. I think you were, you had everybody on shakedown. You you had everybody. Everybody was checked when you were in town. Once you left, the checking went away. They, they all got cocky and, you know, everybody started driving Lamborghinis and the comic and shit. <laughs> it, w it was just too much, man. How you doing down there? Uh, beautiful. I, I, I love doing nothing. I love being at home. I don't miss comedy. Uh, so, yeah, I get the perfect setup for as a shut-in down here. Why don't you miss comedy, Doug? Oh, it's fucking just a constant headache of trying to come up with new shit. Like, so that, you know, that, that cycle of going out, you know, every two years going, I've fucking got nothing. I, I have no interest. I have no, you know, there's nothing in my life or in the news that I care to fucking rail about. And uh, I'll never be funny again. And then you get the one thing you go, oh, fuck, I can't wait to do this on stage. So right now I don't have that one thing, but I'll I mean, find it. I've been getting on stage once a week and I, I enjoy it when I'm doing it but I don't really want to do it. It's the craziest thing. I'm not looking to travel. I'm not looking to do dick. Yeah, I saw Ellen Kerrigan tweeted a picture of her flying in or out of Philly, and she's in a plane with a mask on, and then one of the plastic shields in front of the mask. You know, like, that's it. No, I, I like flying to fucking get drunk in first class. I don't, I don't want to be pulling down a, a mask and sipping and then I get the smoker's cough, which is going to have four rows on either side staring back at me. How you doing with the non-smoking? Oh, that, 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 that failed quickly. Fuck it. You quit Made it 10 day. days. 10 days? Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's like you're talking about. It. It's just, 
I was just listening to episode 41 where you talked about I had to quit doing coke 10,000 times before it stuck. So, yeah. yeah. 10,000. I'll, I'll wake up in the morning. Yeah, I'll wake up in the morning. Oh, yeah, I, I won't smoke till like after you know the day is done and happy hour cocktails. And then the the more I'm determined to quit that day, the more I'm thinking about smoking, and the earlier I start because I'm thinking about quitting too much, and then I'm thinking about smoking. When it's in your head like that, you can't quit. You just can't. that's the way the cocaine was in my head. Like I just the the more I wanted to quit, I would quit and then call the guy ten minutes later. Like, what the fuck am I doing? I just quit doing coke. And then I would call the guy in my mind, you know. So are you saying that you're not going to go on the road anymore? No, no, I get dates, but not till August. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get the vaccine. I'll be the last guy to get the vaccine right before I get on a plane. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, I'm, I'm enjoying doing nothing. I have not slept in my own bed for an entire year since I was 17 years old. Like to actually just be at your house for a fucking year is, I mean, it's, a, I might as well be, you know, I've moved to a fucking South American country, to, to, to changing your life that much, knowing where your shit is. Hey, do you have two things? Yes, they're on the spice rack right next to the fucking Tony Saturies and the uh, salt and pepper. Like, I know that now. When, when's the last time you knew where all your shit was? And you just moved to Jersey. So, like you, 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 you have a brand new place. You know where all your shit is. When's the last time that happened? Nah, it's fucking crazy. It's I, I can't even see myself going to the airport. I think I would have an anxiety attack as soon as I walked into the fucking airport. I would drop right on the floor from a panic attack. That, and just think- every everyone else's levels of rage would put me into a level of rage. That's the other thing. See, my big thing isn't the COVID as much as getting on a plane in Burbank at one in the afternoon, landing in Vegas at two twelve, And I get a call that Brody's dead. Now let's play this a different way. You go to Arizona, you get on a plane, you're going up to Boston, you get the 6 a.m. flight. When you land in Boston, Four white cops shot two guys the night before. Now, and they're riding two blocks from the comedy club. Fuck. You know, do you need this in your life, Doug? No, no, I don't. And this is where I'm coming from. I'm I'm not in love with comedy anymore. Like I did. With, if I'm going on 30 years, you're going on 31 or 32. 31, 31 in uh, August, yeah. Because I met you at the broker. In 91, you came in as a feature act. And then in 92, (laughs) you you got evening at the improv and you became a headliner. I I, I, I just wanted to say, like, you know how people send you an email or a tweet going, hey, they were talking about you on this podcast. And you'd go listen to the podcast to hear your name. I got old. someone's whole podcast just to hear my name and then at that point i don't even need to hear my name but anytime someone sends me you talking about me i always fucking listen because you 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 make first of all you're always fucking make me sound great and uh but your your facts are always fucked up i'm always yelling at my no no that was like 95 when you you said it was 85 i was just in high school (laughs) no i I, I get high i get I get high and I get confused, but I started hosting. You're right about that. It was yeah, it was probably around uh, ninety uh, ninety two or ninety three that I met you in right. Boulder. You had I the push me pull you. You had the push me pull you uh, flu, where you don't know which end to fucking aim at the toilet and which end to aim at the trash right. can. Yep, I yep. vividly remember that. I remember you slept over my house one night because the old t- Colorado run was Boulder. And then Craig on Thursday. Remember, you had went froze up. Off. It did freeze up. Yeah, you did for a second, but yeah, it was the Joker broker in Boulder, and I remember that. And then you were off on Thursdays on Wednesday. I was living out of my car at the time, and uh, my license was about to expire. But in Colorado, they gave it to you the same day. So I had a driver's license with the address of the Joker broker and the room number as my apartment. 
for for years. And then I had my friend sell you a car, and you put oh yeah, that Dodge Neon, my Kessla. You put you put his his address down as a, yeah. as a reference or some shit, Uncle Mike. I remember that Dodge Neon because uh, shortly after I bought that, my first CD came out. So I had a, a trunk full of copies of my new CD and someone broke into my car to steal a change. They smashed the window to steal the change out of the change dish, but didn't take a single one of my fucking CDs. That's crazy. Didn't your car get broken into the night of the finals at the San Francisco comedy competition? Your car always gets breaking into it bad because they stole all this I, everything I owned was in the car so they stole all my shit so I stand in there in this thrift store suit with a check for $10,000 I just won and it's this piece of shit car with all my belongings gone and I was smiling from fucking ear to ear I didn't need that shit that is crazy Doug it has been a long fucking journey my friend that's the other thing like I'm coming on 30 years now I started as a doorman at Wits End, and then I became I, I got on stage at the at the Comedy Works, and then I got the the hosting gig at the Broker until '93. So I'm like you. I mean, I, I've done everything I wanted to do already in comedy. Right now, I enjoy it just going on stage for 30 people once a week. But I don't think I could do a whole weekend at a comedy club anymore. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the traveling involved. The fuck, I'll get, I'll get back into it. But right now, I'm really just happy to be home. And you still own the whole block? <laughs> I, I, and I know everyone on both blocks. I walk the dog, you know, about eight blocks around, and I know Sammy, and I know Patrick, and I know Alex and Aaron, and I know Sandy and Sean, and I, so like I know all my neighbors. I, I'm like my dad. I wave. I make a little small talk about the weather. I move on. I'm like you. I still don't pick up dog shit, but I'm the nicest neighbor in the world. I won't pick that shit up. That's why I won't get a fucking dog. Fuck that. I, rem I remember you yelling about that all the time in L.A. These fucking people picking up dog shit. Who the fuck does that? Let the, let the now, we live on, where we live, it's the fucking desert. So there's packs of javelinas, so, and there's fucking deer, and there's you, know, rat, you got rabbit shit, you got cow shit, you got horse shit, you got fucking wild pig shit, and I'm going to clean up my dog shit? No. It's shit from everything out there. Well, why is it dog special? Now, how far are you from Phoenix, a civilization? Uh, about uh, three and a half, four hours. And you love it. Is, is uh, Murphy still down there with you, Morgan? Morgan still rents a place down here, so uh, she comes down. She had that surgery, so I haven't seen much of her uh, in the last year. But And uh, is the comedy club still going down there? Yo. Yeah, there you are. Is the comedy club still going on down there? Oh, that's uh, Becker's place? Yeah, he yeah. he still has a bar over there. Uh, but uh, they, I, they they do comedy here and again. It, 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 he couldn't fuck. He can't make a comedy club work full time in a town of 5,000 people. He had big dreams. But, it, I mean, if you have a bar, you're going to have customers down here. So yeah. he's doing all right. That's a big drinking area down there. Yeah. So what's the future of Doug Stanhope like? After 30 uh, years in comedy, what do you want to do now? I have no idea. Like I wish I wanted to ask you about that. When you switched up, uh, you, you turned it from uh, Church of What's Happening Now to uh, you know, Joey, Joey's Joint. Were you just rebranding, or was there a reason you changed up? I wanted to start fresh. I was moving to Jersey, you know. I had a new co-host. I wanted to start fresh. You know, that was the church. That was in L.A., you know. That was a different whole feel. I feel like a different person since I left L.A. So I wanted to for it to be have a different feel of a podcast, you know. Yeah, I wish I had When I started my podcast, it was just.
Yeah. And phone in fucking dog shit podcasts. And, you know, maybe I should rebrand this. If I had taken this seriously since the beginning, I could possibly. <laughs> Technical issues? Getting closer to the router? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why fuck around? The <laughs> wife and the kid aren't going to be home for a while. Why fuck around? You know what I'm saying? I might as well bring it right here to my little bar and fuck it. Gorgeous. Yeah, this is coming down now. This bar is coming down because we're not we're gonna turn it into a family room. I'm not a boozer. I don't have no booze here. I got a couple bottles of booze. But when I had knee surgery, I had to move down here. And me and my wife would look at this place and go, why do we even have this bar? I was going to do the podcast from here originally, but they could hear everything upstairs. So if my daughter's home, she could hear me going off, you know? (laughs) So I didn't want her hearing me down here, you know, fuck you, suck my dick, all that shit while she's upstairs. So (laughs) you know how it goes when you have an eight-year-old. You got to be at least a little cool, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What were we talking about? Sorry. Nothing. Just L.A. and what the fuck happened. Like, you left when? In 2005? Yeah, 2005 I was gone. You know, in 2007 I stopped going to the store. And it was like, you know, Ralphie was running things. Ralphie was on the road pretty fucking heavy. I was thinking about quitting. Then the podcast thing started. I started the podcast with Felicia, and then I started selling tickets. But in 2010, I was just about to quit comedy. I had had it. I was like, you know what? I'll do a movie from time to time, get my insurance, and then uh, just do that. But because of the podcast, this is why we're still here. Yeah, that's why I wished I'd put more effort into the podcast, because... You don't you don't get a, a second chance to, uh, but that's why I was asking you about rebranding because I I've thought about like just starting a new one where you go all right people can get into this from fucking ground level and I'll actually put effort into it because <laughs> if I if I knew how happy I would be being home I'd fucking podcast for a living. Listen, man, just sit, you know, get a time every week, write whatever you want to do, and just sit there once a week and tell your thoughts. If somebody comes down, yeah, that's find it interesting. Have a guest. If not, just do it yourself. You're the one that I remember coming to you one time and going, Doug. They want me to fucking headline. I don't have the time. And you go, just go up there and talk shit. Yeah, talk well, you shit. you can do that. You're naturally funny. You're one of those guys that can can do that. I have to write. I, no, yeah, I, you, I, I have you could still. You all you need is a topic. A guy like you just needs a topic. I just got to throw a topic at you. You can rant on it for an hour. Uh, not necessarily. Not like you can. 45 minutes you can. I bet you can. I struggled, but I had to work on it. I fucking... The reason why I went to a one man is because, A, COVID, it's tough to get guests. And I would hate to give somebody COVID or for me to get COVID from somebody over a fucking stupid podcast. And B, I really admired what Bill Burr was doing. Yeah. You know, Bill Burr just gets on there on Monday and Thursday and fucking talk shit and keeps you engaged. I tried to do that, Joey, when I first started. Like, I'm going to try one, just Bill Burr style. Do it by myself alone. And I felt completely fucking ridiculous talking to myself. I couldn't do it. I would never make it more than like three minutes where I go, all right, this is stupid. I need to at least have someone looking at me. Uh, And then if they're looking at me, then I want them to talk back. But I I found that like this year I've done like, I fucking love the zoom thing, except for the occasional technical fucking quirks. I like, I've had comics. I don't even know. I've done their podcast. They've done mine. And I kind of like it. I dig it. I, and before COVID, I, like the, the hardest part is reaching out and asking someone to be on your podcast because that That's used the to hardest be thing. the fucking drudgery of it was I don't have to drive, especially in LA. I remember having a, I did Burr's podcast and then I had to go 
do uh, Burt Kreischer's podcast right after that. And that's like an hour and 10 minutes in a fucking Uber. And yeah, that's it. But now if someone's just fucking sitting around their house with Zoom, yeah, I'll do it's, podcasts. It's, it's kind of cool. I like Zoom. Yeah. I'll tell you when I like Zoom. I like Zoom because I have a relationship with you. And they can feel the relationship through the Zoom. Yeah. If, I, if I don't know you, the Zoom is going to suck. <laughs> okay? It's like when, when, when I get together with Rogan, yeah, the podcast does great. Not because I'm the funniest guy in the world, but because I have chemistry with him. Exactly. I've known him for 20 years. The same thing with you. I put, I sit down with you in a room. It's all over but the shouting. It's all over but the fucking shouting. We'll just destroy him because it's both of us. But why? Now, also, I was thinking chain smoke without stinking up Rogan's studio. Oh, I love that. Every time you light a cigarette, Rogan's fucking hairs would pop up in the back of his neck. I love it here on Rogan. I love it. I love it. Because every time you light a cigarette, he goes, he just jumps. Just by the sound of the lighter, he would just jump. His soul would jump. But I did it. You know, I was talking to Rogan one day about it, maybe about a year ago. And we were talking about uh, Bill's podcast. And he said that he felt that the reason Bill got so strong were those bits were because he did that podcast by himself for an hour. And I started thinking about it. And I go, if I'm going to make it back to comp, because I didn't do stand up for seven months. It was seven months without a fucking stage. And I did a couple spots when I moved to Jersey outside, almost got attacked by fucking bats and shit. They got these outdoor shows up against the marsh. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. It's crazy. But I'm excited about this year. Because now I know the area and I can do outdoor shows. I, I know how to do them, you know. So because of COVID, we'd have, we've had to adjust to so many different levels. I love doing the podcast by myself. It just builds. An, it's an hour, 45 minutes to an hour that you got to pick a subject and talk about it. So instead of doing it in a notebook, I just do it on camera. What do you think? Yeah, that, that was... That was the, the worst part of uh, uh, COVID for at least the first several months is because our podcast is just usually us talking shit about what we did that week or what gig we just came back from or, you know, what our friends do. And I, once COVID started, it's just the same, the three of us. <clears throat> so what's new this week? Fucking nothing. We haven't done nothing. anything. But yeah. So. And I don't give a fuck about what's going on in the news, and I'm not going to talk about Trump. And so, yeah, we'd, we'd have to make up shit to talk about. You know, Doug, you've had a life. I mean, you've had a, you've got a couple books that you've published, and you know, you just we just go into some of the stories, and that's a podcast. You know, the time I'm me and you in Boston, and we did that comedy connection, that one club. Oh club yeah. Six. And we had to do midnight radio, you and I. They had a radio we had to do after the show on a Friday night. It was me, you, and Chris McGuire, I think. And we went to the radio show, and that's when I said to you about the, that's the time, that was the week that your mom's cat died, and she made like a little wake for oh, yeah. She put him <laughs> on a little box with a, with a carpet on it or something. And all the other I think cats. I think that's in my first book. Yeah, yeah. Joey D. I said. Oh, and all the other cats are sitting around a dead cat looking at it going, I could use that eye. I need that leg. <laughs> I, st I still miss your mother. I still miss her. You nicknamed her Bonnie Earmuffs. And Bonnie Earmuffs. Not only because you talk so fucking much. And, uh, and not only did that nickname stick until her death, but I've reused that. For other chatty Cathy's who come over, and I'm like, oh, you can't take any more of fucking Stephanie earmuffs out there. <laughs> I still remember the day you called me up and said Ralphie left the house crying because you yeah, caught him making out. Again. He said that you caught him making out with his mother. Do you remember that day you, you called me and you're like, have you heard from Ralphie? He froze out completely for that sentence. Say it again. You said that uh, you called me up one day and you said that, have I heard from Ralphie? And I go, no. And you go, yeah, I caught him making out with my mother. 
and I yelled at him, and he took off. And I remember going yeah. over to your house, and you guys played a trick on me and shit. Oh, okay. I was going to say, that didn't happen. That's another one of Ralphie's lies. Oh, that's no. Just, that's no, it wasn't Ralphie. It was you who called me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I uh, No, I, w- I would remember... Ralphie making out with my mother. Ralphie spun a fucking uh, a lot of a lot of yarns. Uh, he told some tall tales. I mean, and we all loved him regardless. But I, exactly. no, he did. Uh, my mother did jack off one of her cats in front of Ralphie. So I I did have a witness for that. Like, uh, that was a thing she did just for like shock value. Now they like it. I mean, I don't think she did it to completion, but, but if, a, if she got her cat splayed out with his fucking frog legs, fucking knees akimbo, and his fucking cock and ball showed, she'd fucking tug his little fucking cat package just to get a reaction. It's fucking crazy. You know that they, uh, we had a great neighborhood at that time. It was you on Curson, Nick DiPaolo, and Mitch Hedberg on Sierra Bonita. Ralphie on Curson, no, on uh, Schrader. Yeah, do you remember that girl, Evan? Which one? Evan. She was that blonde, tall blonde that was always slumped Hot. over the ball. Hot, Hot. yeah. And, Hot. Her, and, her hus- and her husband was Bob. Yeah, Bob, who's, yeah, I still see Bob. him all the time. He does uh, a lot of movies yeah. now. They shot somebody in front of Bob's house. Oh, no shit? Yeah, they shot that. Lady Gaga's dog walker on Sierra Bonita. Oh wow! All right. That was that was on Sierra Bonita the other day. I didn't know that. Where we used to live and walk and talk and breathe and fucking walk around and see the guy from uh, whatever fucking that that crazy guy from that show where they hurt themselves. I used to see him going into Seven Eleven. Stevo. Oh yeah. I used to see <laughs> Stevo going into that liquor store. On the corner of Curson, oh, across the street, yeah. there's a 7 Eleven. Oh, yeah. And fucking Ralphie Bay lived on Gardner. Yep. With uh, Jody Fertig. Uh, there was a minute where Celine Hinojosa was there, uh, right. stayed at my house. Yeah, we got yeah, we had a, the And they kind of recreated that, uh, that same building where I lived on Curson. Hennigan was living there. Brett Erickson and Kerry Mitchell were living there. Uh, uh, I guess they both still have apartments there, but uh, yeah, it was like a whole comedy compound after a while. Once the comedy store got huge, and I fucking loved. It. I, there was nothing more exciting for me when the comedy store did get huge was to go back because it was like it was like going to the uh, that after party at Montreal. There's that that many comedians of that top level all hanging out in that back bar with Kerry Mitchell. And I just, I would never do a set there. I would just go in and fucking treat it like a high school reunion. I remember. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I just, I remember being there once when it was like at its new, you know, height and Rogan coming out going, you have to move back here. It's a new renaissance of comedy. You have to, you have to move back. You have to move back now. You're missing all this. I'm happy visiting all this. It was too much, man. It really had become too much. It wasn't even comedy anymore. It was like this fucking grandioso type deal. I don't know what it was. I miss it. I was there. I'm happy I was there for 20 years. Thank you for calling uh, Scott for me and giving me a reference. But it was time to go, Doug. It's it's almost nicer that it kind of ended because of COVID rather than just petering out every other scene now you can blame something now you can blame a disease on it rather than it just got too full of itself and eventually no one gave a fuck yeah it was just and you know i think i think comedy had just changed how managers were sending comics out and the way they were booking them it was just a greed fest man it was just too much and i got caught in the cycle of it and i didn't like it i was like what the fuck is going on with me that this is what I wanted to do all my life, but I'm not happy doing it. Like, yeah, it was overwhelming. The whole scene was overwhelming. It was overwhelming. It was too much. And Especially that's why I, said, when, I don't want to do it anymore. When you, yeah, when you get to a certain age, because uh, I was like on the road, 
I don't I don't hang out after shows on the road for the last several years. I mean, I'll go back to the hotel bar and drink with my tour manager and you know the, my the, the other comics that are on the bill. But I wouldn't go to bars anymore. It's just that that that. that the, a swell of people. I I don't have the attention span, and I'm Maybe always feeling, like, yeah, of, of fans and like, yeah, I want to say hi to all my fans, and but you know, when there's like eight people having a conversation over each other at a merch booth, and it, it's fucking exhausting. That's exhausting. That that all and you always bad. feel like you didn't give them enough. Like, all right, dude, dude, yeah. You, you need more than a show. You need a picture. Okay, I get it. I've never been a picture guy, and I hate. I don't know what to do with my face in a picture, but I'll do it. And then by the time that that can last longer than your set, where you're just taking pictures, and by the time that's over, I don't want to fucking talk to anyone. So yeah, going to the comedy store where I do want to say hi to all these people. I felt like you know the the, the cliche of oh he's looking over his shoulder to see who else is more important no i just have this many people i haven't seen in 10 years and i want to say hi to all of them in a night uh so yeah that would it would get a little uh overbearing yes it did get a little it got a little weird on the road i'm really happy about covid in the sense that you don't have to take pictures no more like it's yeah. just a fucking comedy show that's it it's just a comedy show you know uh, the pictures was getting out of control, you know, women touching you, guys grabbing you. It's like, you know, I, I don't need this shit. I enjoyed the completion of the circle. You know, Doug, they watch your special. They listen to your podcast. Then they come see you live. We shake hands. And that's a completion of the circle. Yeah. That's, what's, that's how social media works. And I enjoyed it. But you're right. There's some people who... If you gave an inch to it, they want a mile. It wasn't enough. You know, yeah. you, take, you take a picture with them, they come back. As you're leaving, I didn't like the picture. Can we do it again? Can you call my cousin? Yeah. You know, I don't know how to out. use a camera. Yeah. Hang on. Hey, like, you try it. Like, come on, just fucking get me out of here. Because when you come off stage, you're in the fucking, you're still in a, you know, the heat yeah. of the battle head and then you have to go immediately into politician mode and smile and shake hands and thank you for supporting me and, and but your head is still in fuck you good night <laughs> no well my thing towards the end was just give them such a great show that they don't want to meet you like that's it like just give them the, the best show that they fucking could have the best show you could give and end it there like I was doing theaters at the end and the theaters are telling me you can't go outside because we won't start the show on time. We'll never, we, we won't get you out of here on time. And it started bothering me for a while, but I also started realizing that my second show was a lot better. When I would do meet and greets after the first show, I would eat a bag of dicks the second show. Because you're just talking for a fucking hour. You're answering questions. People want to ask you about what you said on Rogan's 800th episode. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I don't remember what I ate for lunch yesterday. And exactly. You me, and you want me to repeat something from fucking a year ago. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. So that did get tough. That's the good thing about COVID, that we don't have to take pictures anymore. I mean, all that shit is gone, you know. Hello, nice to meet you. And move the fuck on. But the pictures was getting, it was too much. It's like I don't go to dinner before comedy. There's a reason. Like when you go into yeah. a town, somebody always calls you and says, can I buy you dinner? Of course. What Can we do lunch? No, we want to do 7 o'clock. And then they bring three people. And then it becomes <laughs> a game of fucking Jeopardy with the questions. And by the time you go to actually do your 45-minute spot, you're burnt out from talking to dinner. I, the, the other thing. I'm always trying to find something in the moment, in the news, in the day, in the room, something I can talk about right off the bat to make my old shit fresh. And yeah. if you want to fucking hook up before the show, we're going to be talking about this. Like, so what's new? With, uh, what do you think about? I remember I did the last show in Seattle before they shut it down for COVID. And, uh, yeah, I had some friends. It was an obligatory. Okay, they're they're from Bisbee, so I have to go meet up with them. They're in town, and I everything they're starting to talk to me about. This is uh, what I'm going to open with on stage. Say, I don't want to talk to you right now. Talk to me after the show. 
Don't talk to me before a show because I'm in my head trying to every show I do. I am fucking stressed out about how like I'm always bored with my material. Even if I wrote it and it's my favorite joke a week ago by day seven, I, it's fucking I'm boring. Bored. Yeah, I'm bored. Also. Yeah. So if you talk to me before the show, that's all that's in my head. And I'm not saying it till I'm on a microphone. No, it's crazy. That's people never really grasp that, that. There's so much more to the just the stand up. You know, when I go out there and talk to you for an hour, that's an hour I'm taking away from me resting and getting ready for the second show. So I would always feel bad. I would always go back to the whole hotel room feeling fucking guilty as fuck that I didn't shake that hand. I don't miss that no more. Yeah, it's I don't uh, miss it's that the, feeling. Once no there are people that you have known for a while, and sometimes. It's just a fucking job. Sometimes that fucking smile on my face out there is completely autopilot and I don't want to hang out. And just because I'm in Boston doesn't mean I want to you know, hang out with fucking 18 people I grew up with. I sometimes I, I just can't do it. Uh, and then it, people get pissed off and you lose friends. And then you go, uh, those were friends I kind of lost in 1985 when I left Massachusetts. Uh, anyway, I want to talk to you. I, I, you're fucking writing a book. I want to talk to you about your book. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a struggle. I've been trying to write it for eight fucking years. I finally broke down and got a writing partner and she makes life a lot fucking easier. She yeah, I was, just listening to, I, I was just listening to episode 41. Yeah, uh, where you said it makes life a lot easier because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I got like three or four books in my head that I like to write, and this is the time to do them when there's nothing going on, you know? I wrote yeah, a no, TV I, show with a guy. I don't want to be on TV, but we ended up writing a fucking little spec script and whatever. I wrote one with him. I don't want to be on TV. That's the last thing I want to do is be on TV. That's a lot of work. People don't understand. TV is the like the amount of work that we got into comedy to not have to do for a living. I don't want to work 16 hours a day on anything. I want to go in. I don't mind the guy. You want me to do a Doug Stanhope show? I'll do it. But do me a favor. Shoot me out quick. Because after six hours, I'm going to start <laughs> fucking around and smoking dope and eating edibles. I'm going to forget my lines, and then you're going to get pissed off at me. So before that shit happens, I'd rather you just shoot me out quickly. I don't mind going in at 6. I'll go in at 6. Just get me out by 1 or 2. But to stay there all fucking day, to do one line at midnight, I'm done with that shit. That, that stuff is done. You know, comedy rooms, like I said, I don't know about going to a fucking airport. I, mean, I, I can't see myself. At an airport right now. Right now, today. Maybe I, I, uh, I'll feel a little different. Yeah, I, I vastly. It depends on when you talk to me. If you talk to me at 8 o'clock at night after several cocktails, I'm I'm big on projects and I want to do stuff. And then I, I wake up at fucking you know, 6.15 in the morning with the dog wanting to walk up. Fuck that. I don't want to do any of that. I wrote down a bunch of notes last night of all these things I'm going to do. And then I wake up going, no, nah, I like this laying on the couch shit way more than all those projects. I remember when the, when the pandemic first hit and they were just canceling months. Remember in the beginning? They were just, oh, oh, at the beginning. We're just, we're just gonna listen to this. Months. At the beginning, I was the last show in Seattle. And they closed that down, and I get this is the routing I had was Seattle to Baltimore to Boston back to San Francisco for three days, and as I'm flying to each of these places, she before the show, fucking the governor comes on the TV says no more crowds more than 250 people. Magoobies let it slide. They go, well, we'll probably have a lot of no-shows anyway. We're 350, but it'll probably be 250 with the no-shows. We did that show. I fly to Boston. The governor, as I'm landing, no more shows. They cancel. I fly to San Francisco. They go, we're going into lockdown. I got my last flight to Vegas 
Uh, I wasn't even playing there. I was just going to see Hennigan, the Scotsman, and the fucking governor comes on and says, okay, Vegas is shutting down. Everyone has to be out of their hotels tomorrow by noon. And then I, you know, it was just fucking dominoes chasing me of fucking governors shutting shutting everything down before I got home. So, that yeah, Mark. fucking crazy. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. It, 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 Fucking science fiction! Like everywhere I'm going, it's getting worse. Like I was making jokes in Seattle. I was trying to, I was telling people to fucking lick their neighbor like a trust fall. I shook every hand. I didn't take it seriously whatsoever. Uh, that was like March seventh. Speaking of Seattle, do you remember when I drove you to the gig in the trailer and it was snowing and we had the dog? You wrote a bit about it that the dog was holding you for support. You remember I had I had a I had the fucking camper, and you came to visit no. me. I opened up to I, you. I, New I, Year's. I remember doing New Year's Eve with you when I was yeah. dating a Christian Hodge, and you were with the girl. Carol. Uh, I forget her. Carol. Yeah, I talked. Yeah, to that was like right before you moved to LA, right? Yeah, she said to say hello to you. Oh yeah, God, she was I'm, great. I'm Godfather to her first son. They're down in Florida, living it up down there. Uh, and speaking of, uh, I, I want to apologize uh, because of the you know the the Me Too era. Uh, I did uh, I did take a naked photograph of you, and uh, now I need to reflect and uh, apologize. Okay. Remember that naked picture? I'm sure I still have it somewhere in the crawl yeah. space. Yeah, you in front of bunk beds going ah, and uh, you know I, I understand now there was a power dynamic. You were staying at my house. I shouldn't have put you in an uncomfortable position just because you had a giant fucking cock. Uh, and I feel bad about that. And if yeah. I ever find that picture, I'll post my apology with the picture on Twitter. I wish you do. I, I, I felt so <laughs> empty and lost. I almost joined Bikram <laughs> Yoga after I got naked for you. Uh, it was a toss-up between Bikram and Scientology. That's how... That's how fucking susceptible I was. Get the fuck out of here. I showed everybody my dick those days. Everybody you were just coming out of the shower. Hey, I get out your fucking towel off. I think I even showed your mom my dick one day or my balls at a comedy at the comedy store. And she would those those are some balls. Because I did a one man show and she came with Selena and Jody and Gentry and Marilyn Martinez was there. Oh, yeah. And I'll never forget that. I go, Bonnie earmuffs. What are you saying? And Marilyn goes, is that Doug Stanhope's mother? Oh, my God, Doug. I love him. Because they were both cats. You know, Marilyn had like nine cats. And then your mom <laughs> had like nine cats. So God rest his soul. Marilyn and your mother started talking. It was a fucking great night. Who was that, that fucking was uh crazy neighbor girl that lived on the same floor at Curson in the corner. Uh, the German girl with her blonde girlfriend. Yeah, there was two girls and yeah, you, two I girls. think you were, I think you were doing heroin with one of them. Yes. The blonde one. Yeah. The tall, the tall German girl. We had snorted heroin was, a couple of times. Listen, I was just I thinking, was into, it wasn't that I was into heroin. It was that she was hot. She was another one that took advantage of me because she was hot and she gave me the heroin and she made me do it, Doug. And then she made me eat her pussy. I felt so fucking we'll violated. I've never felt we'll this violated a, in my life. We'll start a support group. Yes. She made me snort heroin with her and then she made because me eat her pussy. I just, I just, I just thought of that because the the fucking story that will never die is my Joey Jingle story. I asked you when I was so fucked up on uh, Rogan's podcast. I did mushrooms going into his podcast, and then I started drinking. And then as the mushrooms are kicking in, I go, "Oh, I can handle some fucking Joe Rogan weed." I don't smoke weed. And then I smoked that and I was fucked. It was like like the 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 drug scene in Midnight Cowboy. Let me tell you something. My feelings got so hurt. I was so hurt that you said that. that I stole your fucking jingle jaw or whatever. <laughs> then people started calling me Joey Jingles. And I'm like, out of all the things I stole in my life, I'm getting, I've robbed fucking houses, cars. I've put people in trunks of cars. 
and you fucking accusing me of a fucking jog, robbing a jar full of coins. I was, I was just high, and I remember thinking, I wonder if, like, I could, I remember, this is like 1996, and I remember, like, well, who would just take my change jar? And then I thought, well, because, you know, the heroin, I don't know. Like, when you hear about heroin, you think, oh, people go to depraved states. Maybe he needed heroin money. And what what happened is right after that came out, that same girl, Evan, called me up and said, oh, yeah, that was uh, that was probably this guy. I re- she brought a guy to my house when I was on the road, and he was like a sketchy fucking street urchin guy. And she's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he stole that. And I'm like, well, and I've, I've said that, but I can't fucking, I can't kill that story. I can't kill the Joey Jingle story, no, even no. though Leave it it's alone. already been It's already been fucking. Who cares? I've been accused <laughs> of a lot of things. I'm a man of many accusations, but I never bought the heroin. She always bought the heroin. I forgot all about that. You just brought that up just now. She was beautiful. She was yeah, beautiful. she was. I remember her. I, 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 like she, you have an image of someone in your head, and you don't know why you do or don't like them. But I remember her saying something really cunty to me, uh, which I probably took offense to because it was accurate. But whatever it was, I have no idea. It's, it's weird when you look back and you go, I don't know why I don't like them. But I don't. Yeah, I don't know what happened. And then they had another girlfriend that I started hooking up with. They had a redhead that was kind of a chubby girl. She was a plus-size model. And she was doing heroin. So then I started hooking up with her for a while. Her father <laughs> owned two blockbusters. He was Mick Jagger's manager or something. Business manager. <laughs> And he bought her two blockbuster videos up in Ventura. And she was just whacked out on heroin, too. I never yeah, bought heroin. I was change. never buying it. I didn't even know where to buy it. That girl would bring me up there, and I'd do a couple lines of Coke. She'd give me a line of heroin, and then she'd let me eat a pussy. That was it. That's that's the reason Blockbuster went out of business. Yeah. Dr- yeah. Her, her drug abuse. And I still remember our nights at that fucking coaching horses. What a fucking bar that was! It was incredible, and 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 we found it. We found it when it was an actual dive bar that you were afraid to go into. Nobody was ever in there. That and was then a they fucking threw, dive bar, man. They had the old lady, uh, uh, Ginger or George Ginger. 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 Ginger was the old lady bartender. She was like, throw mama from the train, mama. Yeah, will you want another drink? Well, this isn't a bus stop. And she, she threw a blind guy out for having a dog, and she wouldn't listen to other customers explaining that it's a seeing eye dog. I don't care. The sign says no dogs. And so uh, it was a dive bar because of her. And then, uh, then they uh, finally fired her and hired a hot bartender, and all of a sudden it was the trendiest fucking bar on Sunset. I still remember being in there with you, me, Dave Fulton. Oh yeah, maybe Mitch. I was, I bought some Coke in Silver Lake. It was the best Coke I ever bought in California. Here I am at the fucking coaching horses, and I couldn't even talk. I was sitting at the bar with you guys. You guys were having a conversation. I couldn't even fucking talk. I still remember that night. Couldn't talk. Oh, you, you wait, you were because was, because of the. Of the coke, how fucked up I was. I did not say a word. That's weird. Now, Becker was always like that. Becker, who could never shut the fuck up in real life, it was the opposite. He was so hyperactive, but you get him coke, and he just sat there. I still couldn't say a word. I was there. I wasn't there that night, but I remember going in another night and seeing you there, and the girl had said that she just saw Gandolfini had just left with two broads like this had to be 2000, 2001, maybe uh, Gandolfini or Tarantino Gandolfini. All right. Cause I know Tarantino was in there. Uh, uh, Tarantino uh, uh, was in there a few times. Michael Keaton. I saw, I remember being in there. Kiefer Sutherland. 
but back when it was really divey. Yeah, it was divey. It was a real dive fucking bar. And that's why they show up there because fucking no one's in there. No, nah, you got to see what it looks like now. It's like a fancy fucking restaurant. Well, it's done. The Pikey, I've seen it. It's, yeah. it's gone. It's gone for good. It can't be that fucking. And then the next door was a bookstore. Remember that bookstore where you bought all the yep. acting books and shit? That fucking, that's gone. That's gone. It's over. You know, it's a shame that all those, I still remember playing tennis with you at Gorky Park with Mitch Hedberg. Yeah. And yeah. I, would get a, I would get a nickel bag down there. That was like the fucking, <laughs> that was like all Russian run down there. It was like the Russian mafia down there selling nickel bags. And we would play, and then me and Mitch would walk up to Hollywood Boulevard, and the stripper used to make us fucking iced tea, sun tea. That's a long fucking time ago, man. That's where Headbug wrote that joke. Man. I realized no matter how much I play tennis, I'll never be better than a wall. Oh, my God. Yeah, his first letterman, he, he did that joke and he used my name. I said, I played tennis with my friend Doug. <laughs> I was like, that's me. That's you still, me. You still miss him? Fuck yeah. I miss him too. I miss all those guys. I miss Ralphie. I miss. I still remember being in the coaching horses with you with Brody Stevens one night. And we hooked up with two broads. I was with a broad, and she had a girlfriend, and I didn't get laid, but Brody got laid. And I, I remember. Go ahead. I, he had a super unknown. He had a Volvo at the time, and he was playing Super Unknown by Soundgarden. And I'm like, I need, I need that cassette, and I just took it from him. And the next day, he's like, Did you take my Super Unknown cassette? I'm like, No. Why would I take your fucking cassette? That was the last time I was probably in coaching horses. I, I remember being in the coaching horses. This girl I had uh, banged on the road in Iowa. I know it was Iowa because that's I couldn't remember her name, so I just called her Iowa. She showed up in L.A. and uh, and we went to some bar. And then I remember Renee. This is when I was so in love with Renee that. Uh, I, I couldn't land the deal, and she would always hang out in the coach and horses. Renee, my wife, the the, uh, and wow. so I forgot so we completely. Go, it's me and Becker and Iowa, and we show up at the coach and horses, and Renee is there, and I'm like, oh fuck, this is my this is the girl I've been trying to fucking you know, nail forever. So I blew off the Iowa girl left her with Becker and I'm going to work Renee and that girl gets pissed and she goes and fucks Becker to, to get me back. I'm like, yeah, my friend who never gets laid, you're going to fuck him. Oh, I'm heartbroken. <laughs> I'm heartbroken. <laughs> so fucking weird times, Doug. Doug, I just wanted to see you, man. That's it. I wanted yeah, to see yeah. you. I made my I made, day. I talked about I, it on my last podcast. Like you fucking, when you sent me that, I was like in such a depressed place where he, like fucking, Oh, Joey Diaz. Fuck. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I needed in my day was, Hey, we got to talk. Yeah. I've been really thinking about you a lot ever since I left LA, just because you got me started there. I would never, I would have never gone there if it wasn't for you. New year's, talking me into going down there. You talked me into it. You were, I, you I, gotta, I read, gotta go down there. I read on Wikipedia when we started, we both, uh, our first headliner was uh, Matt Woods was the first guy you opened for? Yeah, pretty much. Denver? It's yeah. on your Wikipedia page. You can't trust it. But that was my first triple run was with Matt Woods. And I've as recently as yesterday, I've quoted Matt Woods bits. Really? Yeah, I fucking I don't know whatever happened to him. I hope he's out there, but I could do like that was a uh, like a two week triple run with my first headliner on my first like serious road trip uh, tour, and I could do his act to this day. Fucking you know, twenty nine years later, I could do his the act squirrel. almost perfect. about the squirrel. Yeah, you, you have a joke about a squirrel. You ever see a squirrel run or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I, I yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, but he, he had, uh, what was the one I quoted? He, uh, 
Oh, he's a, yeah, a, a cop pulled me over on the way to the show. He said, any idea why I stopped you? And I said, yeah, so would it be less windy while we talk? <laughs> Just- he, uh, he, was, he was the headliner on stage at the Comedy Works the first time I got on stage. And I talked to him afterward. And then about four years later, he pulled me aside and called me out. And just, you know, he read me the riot act of 1963. He goes, you know, you can wipe the floor with these guys, but you don't want to write jokes. You want to keep drinking and snorting Coke. Be my friend, be my guest. He goes, but if you ever put your mind to this, you could be really good. Like he read me the riot act and I walked to the bus station. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go back and beat him up. Like that was my answer. To being, you know, like some guy tries to help you. And I was so fucked up then that I went to the bus station and I go, I can't believe that guy talked to me like that. I had a white T-shirt on, like just a regular white T-shirt with like a hooded sweatshirt. And he's like, you were going to go on stage like that tonight with a white T-shirt? Really? That's why and he just read me the riot act. And I went back to beat him up, but he wasn't there. <laughs> and then I see him maybe... Maybe five years later, he's writing for Brian Dunkelman. Remember Brian Dunkelman? Yeah, you know, I actually just uh, uh, just started talking to him again on Twitter. I love that he just fucking shoulders his bad beat from American Idol and runs with it. But go ahead. Send him my love. He's a good guy. I was at a room room called, I forget, like in somewhere in L.A., it wasn't a it wasn't a comedy club. It was just a, a regular room, and Matt Woods came in and saw me blow the fucking room up. And I remember coming off the stage and him going, "That talk really helped you." And I said to him, "You have no idea how close you came to getting a beating that night, you fuck." And then we became friends, and uh, that's it. That's what life is all about, buddy. But let's check in with each other in about a month. Let's do this again. Absolutely, sir. A you pleasure. Think so? You think it'll work? Oh, fuck you. Yeah. How's Bingo doing? Uh, she's uh, pretending not to be in the background. Okay. Send, yep. Send her my love. Tell her I love her. Hi, baby. Hey, baby. Hi. What's happening, you sexy motherfucker? I not you much. Somewhere. I was listening to the whole thing. All right. Great to see you. I love you. I, 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 one, one of those times someone sent me oh Joey Diaz is talking about you, you gotta listen he goes yeah I want to have him on my podcast but he always shows up with this like gaggle of fucking he's got a, he's got a what do you not a crew but what do you call a posse like, eight, fucking like, up. Like, like 19 people you show up with like 19 <laughs> people deep I got a little fucking office in LA you know what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> I so, love you. So I said, Thank you for get over there. Thank you. I don't want him to think I got a posse over here. <laughs> You're good. You're good. But I love you, and I'm happy I got to see you and to talk about some old times, and thanks for all your help, because without you, I wouldn't be here. So thank you, brother. Fuck, fuck yeah. I love you very much, sir. I love you, buddy. Have a great week, and we'll talk soon. This will air on Monday, so get ready to run. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll tweet the fuck out of it. All right. I love you. Stay black. Uh, all right. Love you, man. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that, dog. That was uh, a great 50-minute talk. Just seeing him did something to my heart. It made me uh, grateful again. Uh, it took away a little bit more of the anxiety, and it was, it was just great to see him. I haven't seen him in such a long time. I know you Joey Jingle fans are happy now, you cocksuckers. But, uh, yeah, it was a great time. I want to thank Doug. It was great seeing Bingo. Uh, and we'll keep it at that. Like I said, you guys are sick of me for right now. I'm going to give you as a week off. We'll probably get another Zoom guest for Wednesday. Uh, I love you motherfuckers with all my heart. Stay black. I love you. And here's for a word from our sponsors. All right, I want to thank Doug Stanhope. But most importantly, I want to thank you guys. Before we go anywhere... I want to talk to you about something. 
The joint is brought to you by Onnit. Listen, whether it's a shroom tech, new mood, alpha brain, on it is the best supplement out there. Why? Because I live on it. I do my alpha brain cycles, and I'm way better. When I got here, I was a little, I couldn't put sentences together. I went on alpha brain. Now I'm tip-top magoo. Don't get me wrong. I'm still half retarded. But alpha brain has helped me. The new mood is tremendous at night. I like the, the protein chips. I like the protein bites. Listen. Everything they have is tremendous. I can't do nothing to you with the weights, but for supplements, I'll give you 10% off right now. If you go to onnit.com and press in church, C-H-U-R-C-H, I'm going to give you 10% off and try the Alpha Brain Powder. Tremendous. I, tremendous. I have it upstairs. I use it tremendous. The flavors are great. Go to onnitright.com right now, press in church, and get the party started. Remember, if you order Alpha Brain you don't like it, Call them, let them know, and they'll send you your money back and they don't even want the product. That's a real company. The joint is also brought to you by Movement Watches. Okay, listen, I love my Movement Watch. They sent me the International Medal, the International Element, International Waters, because like I told you in the beginning of the show, I'm an international man of mystery. Only a doctor wears a watch like that. And the shades, look at that. They're called dusk, dark and mysterious. So you can't see where you're looking. You follow me? Nobody knows nothing. This is all brought to you by Movement Watches. They're just not a watch company anymore. They've expanded into blue light glasses, jewelry, and more. And I love everything that they do. These movement guys are smart. Their pieces look like they cost half a fucking million dollars. But since you own, they own the process, and do everything online, you end up paying a fraction of what they'll charge at a real department store. No middleman, nothing, nothing. You save hundreds. Movement passes the quality on to you, and it ships free. If you don't love it, you send it back. It's all free. This all started with two college dropouts that came up and shook things up. They wanted fair prices, new colors, and fresh designs. And now, Movement is an international brand, way more than watches. They've expanded into blue light glasses, jewelry, like I told you, and more. So do yourself a favor. Elevate your look. Elevate who you are without breaking the bank. Join the movement right now and get 15% off today, right now, today. Free shipping and free returns. I know it's movement, but you're going to go to mbmt.com slash Joey. Again, that's mbmt.com slash Joey. Again, mbmt.com slash Joey. Free shipping and free returns. This is what I'm talking about. You want to look sharp. Spring is coming. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to have long shirts no more. You want to look like you're James Bond. Go to mbmt.com slash Joey right now and get the party started. I love you guys. I'll see you back here Wednesday Tip top Magoo, ready to go. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Thank you very much for supporting us. There you go. Nobody got COVID here, cocksuckers. <laughs>